Right, here we go. Thanks to lovely cloudy skies. Looking out the window here, I can see nothing but cloud and rain for two weeks. Uh, tonight we're going to process some old data, which is this um, dumbbell nebula. And th I've pre-processed this um, this afternoon, just so we have something to work with, try and get a final result. So typical DSLR astro pick with a light pollution filter. It's red. We need to crop it first, but um, if we zoom in, you'll see why I'm cropping. Uh, if we look uh, down the sides here, you see all these um, artifacts. All this down here. There's uh, two nights data here that we're, that we're processing. So obviously with the uh, star registration that we used, you're never going to get them lined up. So two nights data. I'm going to crop out There's some fair amount of noise at the top here and the bottom sides all this nastiness here look it all needs to be cropped so let's figure out I think we probably need to crop down to about here get rid of that so first job will be to load up dynamic crop. And we'll click the reset button and start dragging some, uh, some sides around. Drag that one out to there. Drag him in there and go away. <laughs> Drag that down there, about right I think. And we'll pull that one in there. You can see here in the center, there's actually a, a reticule kind of thing or a target kind of thing in the center. I suppose this is so you try and keep the what's in the center of the screen in the center because it moves as you as you move your sides around, do the cropping. This is quite important first stage, just to crop out the crap that's accumulated around the edges. But that's probably enough and we hit the tick tick box here and that will crop that image down like that we close off uh, dynamic crop and then we're left with that well it's looking a bit red so we take a look at the histogram on this using histogram transformation you will see what are we going to see? Well, obviously, we're going to see it's a lot of red in here, a lot of predominance on the red side. Just to scroll this out. Top here, you'll see how our histogram looks. Now, ideally, what needs to happen is, or what should happen, or what we should see is those three colors red, green, and blue all lined up and turning into white. But as you can see, they're, they're way off. So what we do is we use a process in Astra in uh, in PixInsight called linear fit. And what this will do, because this is a linear image, it will fit the the histogram together properly for us. So just leave him there for a second. Oh. We need to actually look at the, the far, the far left-hand column is blue. So what we'll do is we'll be aligning the colors to the blue channel. This is how you use it. You run up the histogram transformation and see which one is on the left or which one you can see on the left. And in this case, we can see blue. So we'll line our reds and our greens up to our blue channel. And the way you do that is like this. You hit your process. You go to, where is it? Channel extraction. Just there. Uh, we're color spaces RGB. We just hit that button there. What that will do is it will separate the RG and B channels. All right, so shut that box down. Now we've got three separate channels. The red here, probably the green and the blue. Right, the original image, what we're going to do, we're just going to minimize that. I don't think we need it anymore. So 
I'm just going to minimize that for now. Just drop that down there. So what we do now is we use linear fit and align the blue or the green and the red to the blue channel. So we go all processes. Where is it? Linear fit. Our reference image will be the blue. Like that. Okay. And what you do now, minimize the blue, because we don't need that anymore. And we're left on the screen with um, the green channel and the red channel. And what we do is drag this triangle of the linear fit over each of these ones in turn, just like this. And what this will do is process this and fit this, and the first one, the green to the blue. And then in, after that, we'll do the, the green to the red. And then we'll take another look at the histogram. It does take a little while, this. Especially as I've just turned down the processors on the on Pix Insight, the cores it's using. So it'll take uh, take a few minutes to do this. Right, that's that one done. We just minimize that. Put that there, and we drag the triangle of the linear fit over the top of the red channel. It's got the R there. Because it's the red channel. And all the action is going on in the box here. Right. Okay, so that's the linear fit process finished. So minimize that for now. And now what we do is we go to channel combination, which is another Pix Insight process. And what we're going to do now is we're going to recombine the linear fitted, or sorry, the images that have been had the linear fit process run on them. And you can see here when you hit this button, it's telling us, it know it knows which ones it's got to use. Okay. And then hit the, uh, I don't think that one will work. Blood globe. Oh, yes, it will. Yeah. And here comes the image. Put down channel compilation. And there's the histogram now with all three colors, red, green, and blue, properly balanced. Let's just put a stretch on that and uh, see what it looks like with the colors balanced out now. There we go. It kind of getting there, right? We do have a bit of work to do, but you can see the, the color starting to come out of uh, the Dumbbell Nebula already, which is cool. So we, sh we can shut down histogram transformation for now. We don't need that right at this moment. Shut down these boxes. Those. Here's the old original image. We don't need that one anymore. Has been modified and unsaved. Um, we don't really worry about that. But what I will do is I'm going to save this image. Because this is the one we'll be working on from now on. I'm just going to save that and call something recognizable. Dumbbell working model will probably work. I find that if you use the automatic background extractor, you can get a clue towards it in a way. So let's just see if that works. Right, okay, this is the automatic background extraction. We'll put a stretch on that, see what it actually pulled off, sort of all that. Whatever that is. Just stretch that, see if it fixed that bottom. I don't really, you know, you could use, I might have to use it, but we'll see. That's not too bad. I just shut that down. What I'm going to do first, before I run any anything, you know, to do with the background, is this won't apply to you because you use um, you don't use a DSLR, but within Pix Insight there's um, Canon banding reduction utility. And what I'm going to do is run this because I can see some banding in here, 
that's quite typical that you get it's quite a typical thing that you get with uh, Canon cameras and what this will do is it will hopefully flatten out the background um, um, um there we go that's, that's better isn't it yeah looking there's a fair bit of noise floating around in there a lot of the time the key with this is to try and keep it as simple as you can i mean i suppose like if i was to run background extraction on that what am i actually background extracting is there anything there that needs to be fixed up now let's say for example we want to fix this background uh the standard way you do it with pix insight is background neutralization and color calibration he's produced uh, an add-on or a script which fixes all this in one go and I'm going to run that now just to see what it looks like. Let me just save this. So um, we're uh, we're working on a saved image. And under script in utilities, I actually have two here. One is called auto color, and the other one is called game. Now that is for masking, and that is really cool. You'll like that when I show you that, um, which we're going to get to in a little while about the auto color i'm going to run the auto color script on this and just see what happens but i will give you the link to the guy that that makes this stuff quite big images these as you can see they're dithered images sort of eight thousand by four thousand pixels and this what this script does is it runs um background neutralization and color calibration all in one script and looks at the histogram and all sorts of stuff to try and get this better so let's just as an experiment let's just see what it does to this image it'll be quite interesting to see and now it's doing color calibration and that's done the color calibration and i don't think i need to do any background extraction on i think that's all right let's just see what happens out of interest if i run the automatic on it Just interest. I'll put some traction on. Run that over there. See what it pulls out. It may not. It, I don't know. It may be okay, or it may look better. A lot of this stuff with um, Pix Insight is experimental to get the picture you want to see. I try to stay as true as I can to actually what it looks like. I don't try and build in any false colors or anything like that. Um, right, that's the auto done. Let's have a look at the background, see what it pulled off the background. Well, not a lot. A few squiggly bits there, look. Don't know what that is, all that stuff. Uh, let's stretch that, see if it looks better. Not really. So, probably no reason to do background extraction at this, on this particular set of data. What we'll do is we'll turn this from a, no, actually what I'm gonna do is noise reduction. Before I turn it non-linear, we're gonna do some noise reduction on this. Because there, there is some noise reduction on the back of this that I can see uh, that needs to be fixed, all that stuff. So we'll do uh, a good old multi-scale linear transform on it. Okay, so, but this, this is a script I'm going to use and I'll show you what it actually does. You know, when you run a when you put a mask on an image you know it will it will mask the um the bright areas or not depending upon what you select well with this mask i'm going to be able to just mask out the um the nebula and that's it show you what it does All right and what I will do is I'll tick on luminance mask. Don't need gradient mask. You can also do lots of stuff here. And I just click add, right? Now, let's zoom in. And you see it's given me that. I can do this. I'm only masking the nebula. 
Okay. And you can add another one if you want. So we could mask that star. But I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to click that OK button. And what it should do, it should create some mask eventually. I think it's a bit time consuming this. It does all sorts of weird stuff in the background. I'm not sure what's going on here, but it will create a mask for us. Right, there it is. I'll shut that down. And I don't need that. It's doing all, it's still working, still actually doing the job. <laughs> I think, no, there we go. Right, so I get rid of that. Don't need that. And there's our mask of that area there which i can use it's good isn't it really handy and obviously the same you know standard way of doing the uh adding the mask drag that over the side there and you have your and minimize that now you have a proper mask none of this bits and pieces in the middle or around the outside or here it's it's properly masked so what we're going to do is work on the background so obviously i need to invert this like that, and there we go. So you can see we've got got it actually protected properly. So let's uh, draw off a little. Uh, well, it's, the script's free, but let's just draw off a, a little preview window. See what we can do with this horrible noise. Although I could probably get rid of it with Instagram transformation. But I want to try and clean this up just a little bit with multi-scale linear transform, which appeared on my other screen. You can obviously you can use a linear mask with uh, with multi-scale linear transform as another way of of putting a mask on. I sometimes do that. It depends. But I wanted to try out this game script just to see what it was like. So let's put on. The real time preview. Put on my standard settings, which are three. Thirty three iterations on the first layer, second layer two. Now these are the ones that I've tried and seem to work okay. May well be different for you. And most production one. Three. Right. <clears throat> Let's have a look. And this finishes whirring. The thing with noise reduction is if you go too crazy on it, it makes everything um, very blurry. Because you're blurring stuff to try and get rid of the noise. So you've got to be careful with it. Right, there we go. That's um that's finished. I don't know if we can see. Yeah, you see it's I don't know if you can see it on stream, but it sort of cleared up a lot of that noise. So I'll use those settings. I'm gonna drag this triangle over there. Um and then we'll we'll be able to check the preview on and off. Hopefully it won't take too long. Down here or up here, there's a little button. And I can show and unshow the changes on the preview like that. So it just flattens out the noise a little, a little bit. It looks okay. So what we'll do now is we'll apply that to the whole image. And it should not affect the nebula because as you can see, we have the nebula mask. So I'm just going to hide um, the nebula. This always gets me with Pix Insight. When you hide the image, you click Show Mask. <laughs> I think it should say Unshow or Show. So now I'm unshowing it. I'm not showing the mask. Now it should work when you do Show Mask. But anyway, it's just a semantics kind of thing for me. Uh, so what we'll do is put that uh, little triangle over there. I'm going to move him over there. So. Uh, 
you can see the process window running. And hopefully it won't take too long. What this is doing is trying to remove the noise from the image, but we need to be watchful on the sort of the point of interest of our image, which is that nebula. We've I've put the um, the noise reduction on here now. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom. Um, it looks like the noise reduction worked okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this onto a. I'm going to turn this into a non-linear picture by stretching it. So we'll remove the mask. I'm going to leave the mask down here. Maybe we'll use it again. Um, and then I'm going to put a stretch on here and turn it non-linear. Do that with um, screen transfer function. This one here. And histogram transformation. There. I don't know if you can see the buttons down the bottom, can you? Yeah, you can. Um, yes, pretty much, yeah. You want to be working on, no on linear data when you do the noise reduction. Um, that's the best way to do it, I've found. There are processes that you can use, I think, afterwards. I think ACDNR you can use on a nonlinear, but it's better to do it at the start. Start cleaning it up at the start. So I'm going to stretch this. So click that button there. Put the tick mark on. Give us a real time preview, just like that. And drag that small triangle over that bar there. You must have seen this before. <laughs> Everybody does it like this. And turn off that stretch, shut that down. And then we'll, we'll go to work on the image like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm using the mouse wheel, to, I'm rolling the mouse wheel towards me here to get this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these pointers here in different directions until this looks a bit more natural. Hopefully it'll be all right. First thing is go that way. This point here, you're clipping blacks. You don't want to do that. So we're going to go that way first. Uh, probably, yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to drag that one all the way down like that. Okay. Whenever you do something with PixInsight, what, when you're working on nonlinear images, um, if you want to be sure of what's going on, unstretch it and then restretch it, and it'll always it'll tend to look a bit different. Um, but what I'm doing here is now I'm I'm pulling out the uh, the making it giving it this non-linear stretch, and what you'll notice here, this is the histogram of the red, green, and blue. Just here, there's a readout, and it tells me how many blacks I'm clipping. If I move that across you'll see that this number here increases huge to a huge amount this is the number of pixels that i'm actually removing from the image all right obviously you don't want to do that you want to keep that as minimum as possible to the minimum as possible and at the same time keeping the image looking as natural as you can now you could probably i don't actually like to push this past here because I can do the rest of any changes um, later on but at this point you could say right okay I'm going to start with this image that looks like this and you might think that looks really good but the problem is you're clipping 40% of the of the, of the black pixels you, you're clipping it too much so just give it a chance and just drop that there just before the numbers start to change. And then use this slider here, the midtones, 
to pull back. Oops, where did he go? <laughs> it's, ah, there it is. <laughs> Disappeared. So, you can pull that one back. Yeah, I don't want to go too crazy on it at the moment. Because, as I said, you can sort all this out later. If I put this up here, you can see it gets out of hand. Because this is the mid-tones. So we drop the mid-tones down to about... There, that'll do, I think. Uh, shut down the real-time preview. And now we'll drag this small triangle. See it? Yep. Drag this small triangle over the image. And that will now turn that image from a linear image into a non-linear non image. And we can move on from there. Um, what I like to do is reset the histogram transformation when I finish with it. You click that button there and that button there. Close that down. And we'll save it. So there we go. That's how it's looking so far. Not too bad. Coming out, isn't it? Working. There we go. There's um, what we've got so far. Not looking too bad, but a fair bit of distance to go yet on this. What you have to be careful of from now on is that you don't blow the stars out. Um, because when you start making changes to this, you can get all sorts of nastiness around stars. In fact, what I'm going to do, and hopefully I can still get it, I'm going to show you the uh, how to build the data in um, here to get... Um, the annotations right this is for later on should have done this in linear mode but hopefully this will work what you go to is go to image analysis and there's a, a section here called image solver and you click on the image solver and i'm really hoping this works otherwise i'm going to have to go back a step but we'll see Remember, I haven't saved this yet. As, did I save it as a linear image? Can't remember. Anyway, oh, it's a nonlinear image. I mean, uh, you do the search button here, and I'm just going to type in M27 and do a search for that. And this calls it the Diablo Nebula, ne the Nebula, which is also the Dumbbell Nebula. And you click OK there, and that puts in the right ascension declination information for that object for M27. And what I do is just click on OK. And that's going to now try and put star information and location information onto that image and build it into the XIF, XISF file. And I can tell by what I see on the um, screen here on this runtime box if it's working. So this is now going to download an image of the area. Because I told you it was M27. And as it downloads that, then it will try and solve the image and build the data into the image. But I'll know if it's worked in a second once this uh, image is downloaded that it's going to compare against. Because if it flicks through and says um, cannot match and trying this, trying that, then it's, it's failed. Uh, so hopefully we'll be all right. If it doesn't work, then I'll try something else. If that still doesn't work, then I'll back up one step. If I can. And do it on the linear image, which will work. So, come on. Hurry up. Always a nuisance with this stuff. Stuff takes. Well, this, I'm actually processing this quite fast. Here we go. So now it's downloaded um, the catalog it wants for this particular area of the sky on the numbers that I gave it. 
and uh, it's going to try and now fit all that into the image. 22,000 stars, according to that. And this is the bit where it will tell me if there's a problem. Yeah, it's worked. <laughs> cool. Uh, when you see this screen um, that you see here with those numbers, uh, projective transformation matrix and that, then it's worked. If it, if it, and you see it's now building the RA and deck numbers into the image. Um, if it doesn't show that, then it's failed. If it, it can fly through and say, trying to fit this, trying to fit that, and it will try it perhaps a hundred times, and then it will just end up with a fail. Right, what I've just done is I've just added the WCS data to, the, to this dumbbell nebula. Um, and if we go to scripts, utilities, under image analysis, never remember where it is. WCS data, there it is. If you look at the data for the image, you can see it's got the declination and right ascension of the image built into it now. Anyway, the, the WCS data is now built into this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this mask back on. I just showed the mask that I created. Lovely. Look at that. No nastiness at all floating around in there. I'm going to throw that mask back on there. Um, which we will now show the mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and sharpen that nebula up a little bit again using um the multi-scale linear transform we well load multi-scale linear transform hello here anyway what i'm going to do is uh, let me just put a preview over the over the uh, actual nebula itself <clears throat> and what I'll do is um, I'll try and sharpen this up a bit with multi-scale linear transform. Right. I'll reset that. Right, let's see if we can sharpen this up a little bit. Um, for sharpening, what you can use with um, multi-scale linear transform is uh, the bias on here for each layer. So you can do stuff like this, let me wind this bias up, and you'll see exactly what it does. Start to get sharper. But you can't go crazy with this because you're gonna put ring you're gonna put rings around your stars. I'm going crazy on the numbers here. I'm not gonna do it like this. See how it's getting sharper. You can't you can't do it like that. Point two, so we're gonna set these at 0.2. Point two. Not point two on here, right? So what I'm going to do, we've got the before and after here. I'm not sure if you can see it's making that sharper, but a little bit. I'm going to put that over the um, preview. Remember, this is multi-scale linear transform just with the detail levels being adjusted um, on the preview. And then we're going to back in and out of that. And you can see it's getting a bit sharper. But what I need to do is zoom in on the image. I need to make sure I'm not getting ringing around the stars. So anyway, what I'll do is I'll drag this. Yeah, you've got to be a little bit careful, though, because you're sharpening everything up so it can hurt the stars but i've got that really good mask on there so i'm hoping it's not going to do much to this to everything around the outside because if you remember um the mask is blanking everything apart from the center so let's throw that over there 
move that over so I can see what's going on. Um, throw that over there and see what happens on the main image. Yeah, that's coming through okay, isn't it? We'll have a look at that. That star there. Yeah, so we've got this, we're keeping the stars nicely under control. Um, before I started using this mask um, addition to Pix Insight, uh, stars were getting, getting crazy, but this is working quite well. Okay, so what I might do is I might run that again. Just to see. Again, we'll put it on the preview. I'm going to drag it over the preview, so we'll run it a second time on this, on the preview there. Let's see what it pulls out of that. Just have to be a little bit careful here. What what happens? Yeah, that's getting there. It's looking all right, isn't it? Ah, oh, no, wait. I can see ringing. Yeah, we've got some ringing in here. See that ringing around the stars? That's no good. So we're not going to do that a second time on that one. But what I'm going to do is back off from that. I'm going to drop these values down to 0.1 to see if that will work. So I'm just going to push it as far as I can in terms of um, sharpening. I'll try that again. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to look after it a little bit. Uh, no, I've still got ringing. No, I'm going to leave it um, as it was. I'm not going to push it any further. So the next job, with the mask applied still, I'm going to run good old curves transformation on on this and see how see what happens to the color. So we hit that box there, bring up the preview. Hit our real time preview. Hello time path. How are you? Um, which style was that, Third Rock? Um, you need to tell me where to move my mouse. Some Something in the middle here. Was it in the middle? I'm just working on the, um, the Dumbbell Nebula here, mate. Uh, the center one, this one must be this one here. Um, okay, we'll have a look at that in a bit. Um, time pass, those guys, you know, they're just totally clouded out. Rain for two weeks, so I can't show anything live. I had some nice stuff to do as well, but it'll have to wait. No, it's, well, my stream, well... I do it when I'm generally not working the next day, don't I? Um, so I'm off for three days now. Um, but we're just um, just messing around with this with this dumbbell, which is some data that I captured back in in August. So let's just um, drag up the curves transformation. See how we can get it to look with some color. There we go. Looking okay. Yeah, it's just it's bad. I mean, it's crazy stuff, guys, with the bloody weather. 
I think um, Materi's got it okay where he is. <laughs> I think he said he gets one cloudy day a year. <laughs> uh, not here, mate. Not at the moment. Um, probably in a month. I told you in a month or two times, Orion's going to be out. M m month or two, we'll have Orion. <clears throat> it never is. <laughs> Right, so let's apply that to main image. See how that goes. Curves, that little curves transformation there. There's a few bits and pieces I'm going to do to this, but. Well, I suppose if you're in a reasonable temperature um, and you've got good good skies, viewing, you know, observing is a lot easier. Yeah. Right. That's done the curves transformation, which has built a bit more color into the image. All right. Um, what I'll do now is I'll just going to take a look at a bit of this, a bit of local histogram equalization. And again, we do it on the preview. Bring up the um, real time preview there. Let's have a slide around, see what's going on. This can get a bit brutal, not careful. And I always like to put this around a hundred like that. But again, we've got to be careful of other things like stars. There's before, there's the after. This is so this process is local histogram equalization. So we're going to throw that on the main image. <clears throat> okay, right. Uh, that's done the local histogram equalization on this image. And it's not looking too bad, is it, really? Stars are in control. Beautiful. Um, now what I could try, I wanted to be really stupid because <laughs> I just said all the stars are in control. I could try and change the star colors. But before I do that, I'm going to save it. Um, what I'm going to do now, what should we do now? Oh, yeah, the um, it's going to show mass. Oh, my eyes. Oh, that's bright. Hang on. Sorry about that. I'm going to invert the mask and I'm just going to have a try and this may not work very well, but I just want to have a, have a try on this on the actual star color. Because I've got everything masked now, except that all the background is free. I can edit that, but you've got to be a bit careful what I do here. So let's just um, bam, bam, bring up a different preview. I want to preview this area here because I don't want to affect these stars too much and there is a bit of color there I think I will go back to curves transformation reset that get that bring up the real-time preview and just put a color stretch on that I call it a color stretch just to see uh, it may not be the thing to do to be honest just throw that on the main image and see what happens.
I like a bit of star color, but the problem is when you try and add the color to the stars, it, uh, it can affect all sorts of things like your background. Uh, how is that looking? Let's just have a look, zoom in. Yeah, not too bad. Oh, that's a nice little spot down there. Look at that. Let's have a look at that. A little area there. It's interesting. Yeah, kind of cool, eh? Means I've got to do a little bit more work on the background because it's brought a bit of redness in from the background. Um, right. Let's just um, make an adjustment here. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, what am I doing? Um, I just want to drop the background strength down a little bit here. Um, back to Curves Transformation. And what we'll do is click on that luminance there. Mm. I don't know. No, I shouldn't have messed with those star colors. So I'm going to back out of that last process I did because it's just going to swatch the background here. Yeah, it's brought a bit of redness into the actual background, which I don't like. I don't like that. Yeah, pro the curves transformation. Let's just see what we can do with this, with the... RGB, reset it. Black is in the middle of the histogram, which is where I want it to be. And I'm going to put some protection on here. What I'm doing here, guys, is I'm just reducing the background blackness, make it just a touch blacker. Not Nothing crazy. It was there. I'm just dropping that down just very slightly. Um, um, um I shut that down and drop the triangle over the top of the main image like that. Okay. And one little job which I think might be useful to do. I'm just gonna bring out if I can, just gonna make these reds a little bit redder in the center here. This is quite interesting the way we do this. I'm going to show the mask. Remember, I need to now unprotect the nebula. I'll turn that off as quick as I can because I know that's going to really. And I'll use. But on this, I'm going to run color saturation on this. And what you do, you put some dots along this line. I wish there was a way you could do this in PixInsight and save this. So when I thought, I'm sure there is. So when you open the program, it's already got these bloody dots here. Um, and then if you click on like these red areas, it shows you where you've got to increase. But let me just do this color here. You can see here. What I'm holding the mouse button down over here just to see what I need to click to bring this out. Looks like it's about there. Right. Put on the real time preview of the preview. Thought it would make more difference than that, wouldn't you?
Yeah, it's bringing it out a bit better. What about this area here? Just there. So let's just boost that just a little bit. Yeah, okay, that's looking good for me. Okay, so we'll now drag that over the main image and see what it looks like. Right, so that's that color saturation done on there. Looking good. I'll save that. I think we're getting pretty close to being done here. I'm just thinking about Star Mask. Not looking too bad, is it? Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop, just drop the uh, background down a little bit again. Right, let me just uh, darken this background just a smidge. I'm just playing around here, guys. I'm just, just having a look at something. Just having a little play with just the background of that, just a little bit. Oh no. Mm, okay. How are we doing so far? I'm done with, at the moment, I'm done with the background. I'm done with all that. I'm going to put a, oh look, the old uh, colors are coming out a bit better now. I'm going to remove that preview. But I'm going to put a star mask on. All right, which means we don't want that mask on that we had. Okay. I'm asked, where are you? I'm going to pull a preview out. Just do a, a small window, stars. Do the star mask with. Stop. There. I generally like to wind this up about 0.25, something in that range. For the noise for the noise threshold and we'll create star mark. test on that preview yeah that'll be okay that will be all right so we go back to the main image and i'm going to put that over there and then this is now going to make a star mask of the entire image anyway that star mask is done now look so what we do is just uh, ramp that up a little bit and over here, see how well it's covering the stars. Yeah, we'll give that a go, see what happens with a bit of morphological transformation. The star mask over the image, minimize the star mask. It's now got a mask on it. If I show the mask, you'll see all the stars got some protection on there.
slowed up morphological transformation. Um, that's the one we want. So I'm going to do nine elements. Make sure that one's clicked. Uh, we'll start off with a bit of erosion. Drop that down to 40. Drag that over there. Let's see what it's done to our stars. A little bit. A little bit of a change. So wind that up to about 55. Pop that over. See, the key with uh, PixInsight, or I guess any image processing method or software, is masks, style masks, or any other sort of mask. So when you're working on the image, you're only working on what you want to change, not the other stuff. That's the key with it. How does that look now? Dropping that, okay. So let's drop the uh, morphological transformation on the, on the whole image what it does okay so that's dropped the star sizes down a little bit just going to uh back that out do an undo on that just to check it redo yeah that's right isn't it too bad, I guess. We shut down morphological transformation. Remove that preview. Remove the mask. And next little job will be to annotate the image. Normally, the last process I do is the image annotation. Yeah. Annotate image. Let's just see what see if it's picking anything else up there bar the M27. I think that's all it's gonna see, but we'll see. Have a look. See when I load that up, it's now showing me what's what about the image in the in the box here, in the runtime box. Click OK. See if it annotates it. Right, it's picked up a few more galaxies, look. Tiny, tiny galaxy. Oh, they're way out. Tiny. So in that image, which you couldn't see until you haven't annotated it, we found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more. 10 galaxies and the Dumbbell Nebula. So I shall save that as uh, annotated. Keep that moment. And there is the completed image. I'm not going to push it any further. Come out not too bad at all, is it? Now let's find a bit of information about it. So it's also called the Apple Core Nebula. It's called all sorts of things, isn't it? Lots of nicknames. 1200 light years away, so it's not that far in terms of what we've seen. It's not that far away. And it looks like, looking at what, um, what it's saying here about it, it looks like it could also benefit with having some HA data applied to it. So when I get the um, next camera I'm getting and I've got the HA filter, I'll keep this data and I'll add HA to it, see, see what else we can pull out of it. Because that's not too, I don't think that's too bad at all, that image. Um, and there, look, <clears throat> Third Rock, you were right. It is a white dwarf in the central star.
which is that little one there, isn't it? There's your the white dwarf in the middle. Very cool. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to turn the stream off, guys. Thanks for the company. Um, and as usual, I'll edit this out, stick it on YouTube, whatever. So all good. Right. Thanks for the company, guys. I'm going to turn the stream off. Um, and good night. In fact, it will run for a little bit longer. I'm going to do that. So, good night, folks. Mm -hmm.